Hi, from the last session, you have learned what an exception is, why and how to handle it, the Java cl exception class hierarchy, and also the difference between checked and unchecked exceptions. Today, I'll be presenting few other important concepts under exception handling, starting with the throw keyword. You use the throw keyword to throw the exceptions that the Java API comes with or to throw your own custom exceptions. What we, what we have here is a pseudocode of three methods, beautifully named A, B, and C. And the methods A and B call into method C. They use method C, which throws a IO exception by using the throw keyword when it's not happy. But as you can see, method C, which calls method, sorry, method B, which calls method C, should handle the IO exception because IO exception extends the exception class and it's a checked exception. But you see that the method B doesn't do it. The reason being, it uses the throws declaration. By using the throws declaration, the method B is telling the compiler that I'm not going to handle this checked exception, but my caller should. And you also see that we use the throws declaration on the method C. So any method that's throwing uh, and throwing a checked exception should declare the exception using the throws keyword right at the end of the method signature. And method A on the other side handles the IO exception. You see that it has a try catch block to handle the IO exception and it also handles any other exception type because it uh, uses the class exception. It's the parent class of uh, all the checked exceptions. So method A can handle IO exception and also any other checked exception. Checked or runtime because runtime is also a child of the exception class. That brings us to exception mapping. So you should be very careful when you use multiple catch blocks. You should always use multiple catch blocks to handle the specific exception and deal with them. Like if you have an IO exception or if you have a illegal argument exception, if you have a null pointer exception, you should have different catch blocks to handle these in your application. But when you have something like this, you have an IO exception and then you have a very general class like an exception which is the parent of everything, the order is important. The more specific exception catch block should come first and then the more general one, otherwise your code won't compile. Because if you move the IO exception to the last and the, except, the exception catch block first, the IO exception will never be reachable because JVM always handles the exception to the catch block with the exception. And that's the reason exception matching or the, except, the order in which you specify your catch block is important. And the last concept under exception handling is the stack trace. All the exception classes have a method that gives you the stack trace which you should log in your application when an exception happens you will display a user-friendly message to the user. It depends on application to application, how they design exception handling, but you usually don't, will not display the stack trace or the actual error message to the end user. You display a proper message asking him to uh, either try again or contacting your system administrator. But you should log the exception stack trace so that you as a developer or who else whoever is supporting your application can look at the stack trace and see where exactly things have gone wrong stack trace is nothing but a dump of all your method calls like if a was calling b and then if b was calling c and if the exception happens in c you will have the stack trace starting from c all the way to a to summarize now you know how to throw an existing using an existing exception or your own exception from within your methods using the throw keyword. You also know that you can skip or propagate the checked exceptions without handling them using the throws keyword and uh, it goes at the end of your method declaration or signature. You also know that the order of the catch blocks is important. The more specific catch blocks come first and then the more generic ones and it's always a good practice to have multiple catch blocks to handle different types of exceptions which you expect your application to throw. 
will not be doing an exception hands on because we will be dealing with exceptions everywhere as we as we start working on other java apis like io streams java api for xml parsing in the next few presentations and also when we move back to the server side of things working on uh, spring jpa web services you will see that we will be creating our own exceptions and also we will be throwing the inbuilt checked exceptions in the next session i will be presenting the input output streams until then keep sharing and learning thanks for watching